Hey there, my name is Joel. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the Rogers Dynasonic. Not so much the history or anything, but just the functional design of it. Um, first and foremost, this is a Dynasonic. Doesn't look like any Dynasonic that you've probably seen, uh, but that's because a previous owner had stripped the chrome off the brass shell and had it powder coated, this olive drab meets khaki kind of color. Um, and he didn't really care for it when it was done, set it on the shelf, ultimately came to me, uh, just the bare shell. I got the proper strainer and the butt, bottom hoop and the snare assembly, all of which is very critical to the proper functionality, um, as well as the, the shell, because, the, because of the nature of the snare mechanism, the snare bed is very, very shallow on a Dynasonic, probably more so than almost any drum that you've ever used. Uh, it's, it's very hard to see and, and arguably some of the earliest Dynasonics, particularly the wooden ones, um, didn't really even have snare beds to start with. They were, I think they were trying to avoid doing that. But that's more about the history and that's probably content for another video. Um, you'll notice these lugs are not Rogers lugs, they're Tama motorboat lugs um, from the early 80s as were used on the Swing Star and Royal Star drums from Tama. Uh, the reason I'm using them is because I had them and they are the same whole uh, size dimensions um, as spacing as Rogers lugs so they fit right on without any modification of the shell so you, if you have a Thomas snare drum and Rogers snare drum you can swap the lugs they'll fit each other um, without any modification to either so that's kind of cool but it does make for an odd looking drum to say hey this is a Rogers Dynasonic you kind of want to go never seen one like that well it is and it's the one that I have now. It's the fourth one that I have ever owned. So the thing that makes the Dynasonic a unique drum is this snare mechanism. Uh, without taking it apart and showing you, um, it basically has the snare wires attached to it and it has this little thumb screw here, this little knurled screw that um, adjusts the tension on the wires. So you get basically horizontal tension on the wires from the tension on the screw here. And then the snare mechanism, the strainer, basically lifts the mechanism up to the bottom head. So um, there's a couple of things that come into play here. One, in order for this whole assembly to fit a 14 inch drum, the snare wires themselves are actually about a half inch shorter than almost any other like snappy snare, basically generic sort of 14 inch snare wire uh, assembly that I've ever used um, and as a result they they sag a little less you know when you set the drum horizontal gravity does its thing and in the middle of the snare wires they tend to kind of sag a little bit well these sag less because there's less wire to sag um, so that helps to make it crisp plus you have straight horizontal tension there's nothing pulling up at all like with a normal um, you know strainer that would be pulling up uh, kind of along the snare beds, you get arguably a little angular uh, tension that would kind of help the snares to bow a little bit. You'll get none of that on this because it's a purely horizontal tension. And then this just brings the entire cast snare mechanism up to the bottom head. So I hope that that makes sense. So as such, on this drum, therefore, there are two adjustments. You have the, ver the vertical adjustment for the snare mechanism by the snare mechanism to lift the, 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 the carriage up to the bottom head. And then you have this tension screw right here, which adjusts the actual tension on the snare wires themselves. So as a result, you can have very, very tight wires cranked and then have them barely touching the bottom head. Which sounds something like that. which is rattly and annoying when you listen to it like this. However, it does make for a fairly throaty sound when you're playing, you know, backbeats. So that's a sound, you can also tighten it up bring it closer to the bottom head. And you could arguably lower the tension here and have a different kind of rattly sound.
which is similar in that it's throatier, a little more hollow sounding at lower um, dynamics, but it doesn't rattle as long. So again, for back beats, it's pretty cool. And then you can do the thing for which the Dynasonic is really known. And that is, and by the way, you'll notice I'm rattling this kind of back and forth. I sort of shake it loose. It is a single screw and the screw itself, if you think of this as the screw and you're tensioning it and it's pulling the snare assembly toward you, it's on a little pivot. And so if you, if, if it, if it's not centered, it's kind of at an angle a little bit. It'll pull more on the snare wires on this side and these will be rattly. So I kind of rattle it so that it sort of settles in the middle. So I just kind of shake it as I adjust it. And I'm just trying to dial in the right amount of horizontal tension and then the vertical tension on the strainer. Cool thing about this, very responsive to the lowest dynamic level. And at higher dynamic levels, there's a little bit of flutter there. Get rid of that. See if I can tighten it up a little more. About like that. So at the softest dynamics, you have a really nice response. And at the higher dynamics, it's really not that much more rattly. So you wind up with a very You wind up with a very articulate, dynamic, dyna, sonic um, drum. And that's kind of what this thing is really known for is it's incredibly crisp, incredibly staccato, and very, very, very responsive. So it's a two-way mechanism in that there's two adjustments. There's a horizontal tension on the snares themselves. And then you have the vertical uh, pressure of the carriage assembly pressing against the bottom head. Uh, and they are independent of each other. So you can do some interesting things with it and you get some sort of unique snare responses as a result. Uh, and it's definitely a worthwhile drum to have in your arsenal if you don't have one, particularly if you really do want crisp, 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 staccato, dynamic response from your snares. Dynasonic, that's a good name because it's extremely dynamic um, in terms of its response and at all dynamic ranges, even loud, it's still very crisp and very staccato. Whereas most snares, as you, you get my, if you loosen them to where they have, or tension them rather, to where they have good, soft, dynamic response, your harder hits will tend to be a little bit more rattly. Um, and the Dynasonic's one of the few drums that's maybe the only drum that I know of off the top of my head that really isn't that way. Pretty much how you set it's kind of how it is at all dynamic ranges. So it's a cool drum. You get it dialed into the way you like it, Takes a little more effort than with a regular drum, but once you get it dialed in, it's gonna sound that way, basically respond that way snare-wise um, at all dynamic levels. So it's a cool drum. Uh, this is a weird one, um, but, it, it, uh, but it, it is a true Dynasonic. So anyway, there you go. I hope that you enjoy that. Uh, thanks for watching this video. Uh, I will be continuing to do drum-related stuff on this channel, so if you like to geek out on drums and types of drums, models of drums, um, just listening to different drums that I, that I have. Um, please like, subscribe, share, hit the bell, do all that stuff um, and help me grow the channel if you would. I certainly would appreciate it. And if you have any suggestions or um, questions or any of that kind of stuff, feel free to comment below and I'll be happy to respond. Thanks, I appreciate you watching this. Take care.